Black Alpha Network, home of black excellence, power to the people. All right, cash reparations everywhere around me. Cream get the money. Dollar dollar bill. Who run it? Certified salute, family. Much love and respect. Much love and respect. Much love and respect. We're going to chop it up like we always do. We're going to break it down like we always do. And we're going to have a great conversation. Shout out to my brother, Duddy. I see you, family. It's on right now, y'all. It is on, on, on. Everybody knows it. And foundational Black Americans, we just going to go ahead and let the whole world see what it's always been about, what it's always going to be about, and it's always going to be about us, y'all. So I hope everybody had a great weekend. We're going to break it down. I got my brother, Marcel. Uh, this is going to be a great conversation. We're going to chop up a lot of good game. We're going to get some real clarity, some straightening and some understanding. And, you know, we're going to smoke on that K-Hive and Tether pack. You know what I'm saying? Because Kamala Harris has disappeared and the Tethers are getting deported. So that looks like a very good day for FBA, y'all. That's what it's about. So after the election, everybody's seen what's been going on. There's been a whole lot of babble. You know, the Tethers is out here on their last wheel because they know they're about to re-flee. They're about to flee in reverse. They're going backwards over them damn fences, and that's a good damn thing. The K-Hive, they done crashed all the way. Can't even find some of them. They done went into hiding, K-Hive hiding. You know what I'm saying? And Kamala Harris right now, she done went back to Hawaii. Now, how the vice president of the United States of America got her ass whooped so bad, and I'm not even talking about by Donald Trump. I'm talking about by foundational black America that she hopped on a plane and went to Hawaii on vacation. That is not vacation, family. OK, that is not vacation. That is tapping out. And that's exactly what she did. And that can only happen because foundational black Americans created that. So all the Democratic shields, I know they listen it because they listen every single time I talk. All the Democratic shields, I just want to let you know that the reason why you are about to be in the unemployment office is because foundational black Americans, we made your lady lose, and now you're about to lose your job, and you've been losing in life, and we've been winning all the time. We're not going back and forth with these people, okay? This is how it goes. In life, when you win, you brag. When you lose, you shut up. So all the Democrats, take this L, sit down, and enjoy the show. My brother Marcel, are you there, family? I'm here. You know what? I think um, Khan Mala and Slow Joe Crow, I think they're trying to get us into World War Three as revenge because the whole damn country seemed like it then went red. They lost the popular vote, the electoral vote, the Senate, the House. They just lost. Out there lost. So, and you know what I find funny? You got these Democratic shells talking about the reason we not crashing out is because we we done. We done. They've been crashing out since the election night. Sitting there trying to convince themselves that they haven't been acting a damn fool on this internet. So I just want to rub it in. Because had that woman won, they would have been doing the same thing to us. So we're going to give them what they would have been giving us. Troll game on maximum, y'all. See, I want everybody to know this. And we've been talking. Marcel been out here G-checking folks. You know, when Roland Martin came back from the Outback Steakhouse, you know what I'm saying? He had to come back and he had to see foundational black Americans regulate him. And I see Marcel regulate Roland. So, Roland, you go ahead. When you come back from Applebee's and you spend that last couple of dollars, just know you can't roll. You can't hide. You're going to get this goddamn work. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people saying, well, the election's over. The election's over. Y'all just stop. Stop. That sounds like somebody who's begging. Where I'm from, we call that desperate. See, what it is, is that the Democrats got whooped so damn bad that they want us to just leave it at the election. No, we're not going to leave it at the election. You know why we're not going to leave it at the election, family? Because the disrespect that they gave towards us, it goes year round. OK, so us G-checking them going to go year round. They're going to get this completely. It ain't going to be just, well, Trump's in office now, so we're going to go ahead and just forget about it. No, 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 no. Uh, uh. I ain't forgetting about all the simple Simons and y'all must be getting paid. OK, and shut up and votes. Nope, nope. Hell no. Democrats, they're going to have to get this work completely. I'm talking about the full spectrum. G check, G check, G check, regulate, regulate, regulate. And I take pride in it. There's nothing I love better than smoking on a Democratic pack. OK, roll it up, light it up, smoke it up, inhale, exhale. 
Damn all of them. Because the Democratic Party is the reason why foundational black Americans are in the position that we have been in for the last 60 years. Well, guess what, y'all? We're the reason why the Democratic Party is in the position they've been in for the last two weeks. And I'm going to tell you, this position that we in, family, that's called the winner. Where they are is called the loser, the embarrassment. The whole world is laughing at them. Kamala Harris got molly whopped to the point where her career is over. We didn't just end her campaign. We ended her career. There's a difference. She's somewhere in Hawaii, okay, and she's making some collard greens in the bathtub, and she's having to deal with the fact that all the tap dancing, all the buck dancing that she tried to do for foundational black Americans, it did not work. And it ended the same way it started. We on code, we regulate, we the winners. So if they don't like it, they're going to have to deal with it. Now, Marcel, you brought up something I want to bring up, and I want to talk to the family like, because there's been a lot of people running around here now, and they're trying to run this narrative how... Black Americans were out here voting for Kamala Harris in these great numbers. You broke down a lot of the statistics, and a lot of them was right here in my home state of Georgia, GA all day. And it showed that the couch whooped Kamala Harris's ass, and it wasn't just Donald Trump. Can you elaborate on that for the family while we smoke on this pack? You know, this is my favorite part of my Twitter day. Oh, let me find that article, actually. So in Georgia, it found out that Indeed, the couch did win, and pretty much it was the freeman who handed Kamala Harris her loss and had the Donald Trump the presidency. In Georgia, I'm going to pull it up right now, black voters, we were the only group that showed a decrease in turnout from 2020 to 2024. The only group. Every other group showed the increase. We chose the couch, or we chose a third party, or we chose Trump, because Trump saw an increase in his black support. Colin Bala Harris saw a decrease. And Georgia was a crucial swing state. But nationwide, nationwide, had the Democrats just saw a 1.9% increase in the black vote, Kamala Harris would have won. But just a 1.9, well, I think, well, let me rephrase, a 2 to 3% increase in the black vote, Kamala Harris would have won. They could not increase the black turnout 2%. So I hate when you get these democratic shields like Roland Martian, who like to say, but most black people voted for Kamala. Black men really turned out for Kamala. That is the most disingenuous representation of data. What that is saying is that the black people who voted, yes, most of their votes went towards Khan Mala. Yes, that's true. But they're ignoring the fact that 40% of the black voter electorate stayed home. And the ones that did come out, they actually had a lower shift. To, they actually shifted away from the Democrats and actually chose the couch more or they chose a third party or they chose Trump. And that's why Con Mala lost. Because it's really not that hard. Think about this woman. She had the media on her side. She had Hollywood on her side. She had a billion damn dollars. And yet they could not get a 2% increase in the black voter turnout. So that doesn't just mean black men shifted away from the Democrats. That shows black women are shifted away from the Democrats as well. And I love this is my I love this song. I love this song a lot. Yeah, all day. See, that's the difference. And we've been telling everybody. I want somebody to tell me right now, did anything go down in this election that we didn't call out in the black grassroots? At this point, the certified foundational black American grassroots is a hundred for a hundred. You know what I'm saying? Every time we go up to bat, man, we hitting grand slams. That's what's happening. You look at our track record opposed to everybody else's track record, and it's not even close. We said what we were going to do in this election, and we've done it. And by the way, remember the day after the election, they were trying to put this victory on Latinos. How long did that last? 24 hours? You know what I'm saying? Two, two minutes? The Latinos weren't even claiming that because they know goddamn well they did not win this election. It was FBA. And on top of that, be worrying about this damn deportation and this border czar that's coming. So they got their hands full over there. And everyone else has their hands full. And the only people in America right now who are cool, calm, collected, and certified are foundational black Americans. Look right now in America, everybody. Everybody's real tense. Everybody's nervous. They don't know what's happening. The only people in the room that are calm as ever are foundational black Americans. We're in full, absolute control. Ain't nobody 
going to take this victory away from us. And we're going to continue. This victory lap, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to run all the way through the midterms, all the way through the next election, when we run whoever else they put in the way out of the paint. It don't stop. Get used to winning, y'all. Get used to winning because we are on a track record of success. We are on the road to success, and reparations comes next. I'm telling you. As we see everybody run out here, and they're trying to scare us back on the plantation, they try to scare us to stay on the plantation. And neither one of those work. You're also seeing them come out here and trying to do a gender divide. That ain't working. I see my sisters in here right now. Certified salute to my sister, Nikki. I see you, beloved. Much respect. I see my sisters in here right now. And I seen that we was on call before the election and we on call after the election. So the gender divide ain't working. Trying to put this off on Latinos ain't working. What the Democrats got next? They ain't got nothing. The damage in which we have created for the Democratic Party is immense. They're never going to go on TV and just say it, okay? If anybody's thinking they're going to throw a press conference and then say, hey, foundational black Americans whooped our ass, we're going out of business. They're not going to do it. So I'm going to do it for them. Foundational black Americans whooped their ass and they're going out of business. Somebody just sent me something earlier out in California where they're shutting down a lot of Democratic plantation offices, all right? We literally ran these people out of the paint, literally. These folks are leaving. They're shutting down things. Uh, who's running the country right now? Joe Biden is 10,000 years old. And Kamala Harris is on vacation. OK, like I said, it's not really vacation. That's a I got to go home and get my shit together because I got my ass kicked. But nonetheless, it's all a result to us. We won this election and that's why we smoking on this k high pack. And by the way, speaking of the k high, where Dale Hughley at? Where he at? Y'all see Plaz out here trying to sue people. Plaz, you out here getting served by Soldier Boy. OK, a lot of rappers may G check somebody. But damn, you got G checked by Soldier Boy. Plaz had a damn suit. Ready to go. Soon as he's seen that butter biscuit paycheck bounced. All right. The butter biscuit paycheck bounced. Plaza starts suing everybody. And then look who he sued. He sued Glorilla. She was with Kamala. He sued Cardi B. He sued Megan Thee Stallion. He sued all of these people. I guess he wanted to be the only five foot person. Matter of fact, ain't no, no, no. Megan Thee Stallion about six foot. So goddamn, he looking up to her. He looking up to every goddamn. But I think he was looking up to Kamala. So Plaza, in the meantime, while he ain't collecting his color money and getting thrown off stage, and he ain't at the goddamn Disneyland swinging with the Smurfs, in the meantime, in between time, Plaza got his ass whooped, and he ain't got nowhere to go. D.L. Hughley, we can't find him. Steve Harvey, where the hell is he at? All right? If they listening or they got their operative listening, they welcome to come get this G-check any goddamn time. Where the hell is Michael Erica Dyson? I know last time we heard from him, he was trying to slide in women's DMs. We don't see him no goddamn more. Vanessa Jones was crying. We said he was going to cry on election night, and he cried. You dig? This is how powerful we are. So all these little shields that still want to come around and talk reckless, that ain't how it works. You're not going to slide in no foundational black Americans post and be like, well, what y'all going to get now? I'll tell you what we going to get. We going to get to the money and your ass is going to get an eviction notice. That's what's happening. It don't work like that in America, okay? You don't lose and then still talk. You see, they don't have that really like wrapped in their brain, right? They think they're going to go back to how they was talking to us before the election. It don't work like that, okay? You got embarrassed. The whole damn planet Earth is laughing at you. The game is over. The game is over. There's two types of shields, okay? There's a shield that goes in hiding, and then there's a shield that thinks he's going to go down swinging. You can't go down swinging when you already went down, and we continually smoking on that pack. And have y'all noticed the uptick in tethers? Y'all notice tethers been popping up real crazy lately? Because the tethers know they got about, what, a month and a half? A month and a half, and they all going home. They all going home. They all leaving this country. Deportation. And since we're talking about deportation, what they're afraid of, family, they're afraid that we are going to not only get in on what's happening, they're afraid that we're going to start pushing these folks to go home as well. And I'm going to go ahead and admit to you, I am. I have ICE on speed dial. I have it on redial. OK, I got ice on the goddamn rotor phone. I got ice on my goddamn walkie talkie. I got ice on the cell phone. I'll send an email to him, a fax, ham radio. Any way I can contact ice, I'm going to do it because I remember every single thing that the tethers was talking about. Now the tethers are going to have to go home, deported. And I remember every single thing that the Democratic Shields are talking about. Now they're out of business. Marcel, you've been seeing that, brother. I'm going to let you cook, family. Tell us how you feel about all these tethers and anybody who wants to come up. Y'all come on up. Let's chop it up. Y'all know how we do. We're going to smoke this pack. Roll it up. Light it up. Well, the key hive was very arrogant, very degrading towards us. And now they're trying to speak like us. They're talking about they're going to call ICE. I told y'all 
mass immigration, the illegal immigration invasion, and even the legal immigration invasion, I told everyone it's all about replacing us. So now you got these shills, and they're saying they're going to be calling ICE because these Latino Hispanics did not vote the way they wanted them to vote. So they're saying they would have been okay with these Latino Hispanics being here if they would have voted for the Democrats. But because the Latino Hispanics not vote for the Democrats, they want them gone. So what is that saying to us? That's making it very clear. This was all about importing a new voter base. Why would they want to do that? I mean, they are saying that the black vote goes for the Democrats all the time. And really, as you saw, just a 2% increase in the black vote for the Democrats and Con Mala would have won. They know that we are waking up. They see that we are shifting away from the Democrats, like we should have done a long time ago. And the Democrats see that we're starting to say to them, you're doing all of these things for these illegals, for these corporations, for these foreign nations. You've done all of these things for Americans. You've done all of these things for Asian Americans. The list goes on and on and on. When you look at that list, the only group who is not on that list is us, the freedmen. That's going to change. What are you going to do for us? Our people are shifting toward us. It might be happening slowly, but it's happening. And the fact that it's happening, and we don't have the entire media behind us, we don't have all of Hollywood behind us, we don't have a billion dollars behind us, and yet our people are shifting toward us, that scares the Democrats. So they thought they could import a new voter base. But every demographic showed a significant shift towards Trump. Most demographics, I should say, the ones that did not shift it away from him only a little. So they see that. So now the Democrats want to get these Hispanic Latinos out of here. And as far as the Hispanic Latinos, let me tell you something. They're actually not as afraid of deportation as you might think. A lot of Hispanic and Latinos want the illegals going too. Let me tell you, the group I have found that is the most adamant about getting illegals up out of here are Hispanics and Latinos. They absolutely cannot stand illegals, even the ones who probably came here illegal themselves. So they want them out of here. And as far as ICE goes, I have ICE to them in my phone. I'm serious, I do. But there's also a form you can fill out and send to ICE. You fill it out. I did it during the Biden and Kamala era. Knew it wasn't going to make a damn difference, and it did it. But this guy, Tom Hoban, he doesn't seem like he's playing. It's like he means what he says. So I'm going to be filling out that form a whole lot. As far as the tethers go, you know, the ones that you say, well, I'm here now. Ain't nothing you can do about it. That guy, Stephen Miller, he says that they're going to be denaturalizing people, too. So even those who are naturalized citizens... Stephen Miller said they're going to be denaturalizing people, those who received their naturalization, but they did it through a false pretense. Now, some people say it's not a significant number that probably did that, but we don't know because I don't think we've ever looked into it. Well, they say they are. I cannot wait. Like I said, I love this song. We're not going to get reparations from a Trump administration, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to get it. But what we're going to get is something that's going to help promote reparations indirectly because no one's more against us getting reparations than these illegals are, probably even more so than the biggest that we have to deal with all the time. So this is something that's going to indirectly benefit us. As I call them, talk about something they haven't been crashing out. I've seen several videos of them, of them cursing at and yelling at their camera screen, talking about they're done. They, they, they've fallen back. My question is, where, where and when have they been of any benefit? Everything they say that could happen to us underneath the Trump administration is happening right now. We have police brutality right now. We have high levels. Our homeless rate increased right now, increased underneath this administration. The police have not been held accountable adequately right now. So I, I can go on. Everything they claim it happened, they talk about civil rights. Our civil rights are violated all the time right now. So I said, don't call them. Have any of you been calling these people? 
who who has called them? And if a person has called them, I need someone to show me where it has made a difference. Because everything they say that, that they're afraid of happening under the Trump administration is happening right now. The difference is, whereas we have had to deal with a Kanmala and Biden administration, we've also had to deal with it from illegals. Under the Trump administration, we're just dealing with the bigotry we've always been dealing with. And that's just a classic... American bigotry that we've always had to deal with without any illegals being added to it. So, Tonto, don't call them. Okay, if people have been calling you now, it hasn't made a damn difference. So, what good were you any damn way? Damn good point, brother. My brother Tariq, shout out to Tariq. Much love, brother. Tariq makes a good point. Tariq always says when the Democrats are in office, all of the smoke comes to black Americans, okay? And then when the Republicans are in office, everybody get the goddamn smoke. See, when we had Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, black Americans got the brunt of every single thing. And they were literally uplifting everyone. There was no guess. You had to just sit back and watch what was going on. Look at New York City right now. All right. Look at Chicago. We seen the Democratic policies and what they were trying to present. America dodged a bullet with Kamala Harris. I'm telling you now, because we did the math, it's simple mathematics, 22 million. You can do another 22 million. Who's to say that one going to be 25? You're talking about on the books, off the books. You're talking about luxury hotels. You name the benefit, they were giving it to illegals. And America as a whole basically fired the Democrats. And foundational black Americans, we were the ones at the forefront of all this. Every time you seen somebody that was really going against mass immigration, it was us. Anytime you've seen some illegals doing some funny style stuff, it was a black American behind that camera that was recording everything. So they know that we were the spearheads of everything. They know it started with us and then the rest of the world started to get behind the momentum that we created. This was the first time in American history where the black grassroots controlled the dynamics of the political sphere. We ran this election. Everybody else was just getting on board after foundational black Americans said something. People were talking about the couch. That came from us. These Palestinians were running around here saying no ceasefire, no vote. Now, y'all know who the hell they got that from. So when Kamala ends up losing Michigan, a lot of that came from the Arabic community. The Arabic community was trying to follow behind what we were talking about. Me and Marcel know that very good in Columbia, South Carolina on King Day. And on King Day, when they did that, we sat back and we watched it and we seen that they were following us still in our things. So it goes to show you foundational black Americans are in full control. And the Democrats know this. They know this. They know this. And this is why they're so afraid right now. I'm telling y'all, they are so afraid. They have no clue. They don't know what's going on next. There's no candidate. They think they're going to try to give us Gavin Newsom. Brothers and sisters in California already got him on lock. He's done. He won't do nothing in 2028. It's a wrap for him. They're trying to talk about AOC. She won't go nowhere. Neither. They don't have a future. They definitely don't have a present. And foundational Black Americans, we so bright, they got to wear shades. So it's the difference of opinion between them and everybody else. But we know the solid facts. Those facts are is that during this election, brothers and sisters stood on code and brothers and sisters ended the Democratic plantation for good. There will be no U-turns. We're not going back. It's over. As long as we are in the building and I got my brothers and sisters I see in here right now, this real energy, oh, it's a wrap. And they can't do nothing about it. One thing Marcel said that I want to add on to. Y'all been seeing these fake ass decoys, want to be grassroots Democrats. Now they running around here talking about they going to delineate. Y'all see that, right? Now they saying, well, we ain't going to do nothing. When America, you know, goes down, we going to sit on the building and drink coffee. These people are having temper tantrums. They are upset right now. They're trying to come up with all these different reasons behind why they lost. They didn't want to delineate from these other groups based on tangibles, based on resources, based on anti-foundational black American hatred these people have. They all want to do these things because they lost an election. This is what they're doing. So you're going to start seeing these folks talking about we're going to call ICE and we're not helping everybody. This Don't trust them because the same people right now talking about they're not going to be on the POC train. Come the next election, they're going to be talking about all lives matter. These people know the formula that's working right now is foundational black American formula. We're the ones who won this election, bar none. So they're going to start saying a bunch of things that we've been saying, but they don't mean it the way we mean it. They basically just having temper tantrums and they mad at each other. Speaking of being mad at each other, the whole goddamn world's fighting right now. You got tether on tether crime. You got illegals calling uh, ICE on other illegals. You got a civil war within the Democratic Party. 
Everybody's fighting each other except for us. Everybody's nervous except for us. Everybody's mad and broke down except for us. You don't have to look no further if you want to see the truth. All you got to do is come around Foundation of Black Americans. We've been smiling all goddamn week for the last two weeks. We've been popping bottles and smoking on packs. They ain't been doing that. They've been trying to re-strategize. That ain't work. They best plan ain't working. So what does any of these people have next? Not a goddamn thing. And we're going to continue to push this through the midterms. They're going to lose there. And then, like we said, 2028, they're going to lose. And in the meantime, in between time, we're going to put a lot of people out of business, a lot of folks out of business. The worst thing that could have ever happened was for Kamala Harris to pay all those people like Al Sharpton and them. I'm glad she gave them that money. I'm glad. I'm glad Al Sharpton got that little butter biscuit paycheck. So you know what comes after that. See, the man don't like giving out paychecks and not getting anything in return. Now they're looking at all those numbers and they saying, well, hold on. We paid Al Sharpton. We paid Roland Martin and whoever the hell else. And Kamala still lost. Oh, no, no, no. We're going to put them in the front of the line of getting fired. If they was in the middle of the line or in the back of the line, trust me, they just got bumped up to the front. Not only did they lose this election, they got embarrassed in the process and they wasted the white man Democrats money. If you are here being a Democratic shield. You ain't supposed to be wasting no Democratic Shield paychecks. You got one goddamn job to do, and that's to get black folks to vote for the Democratic Party. You failed at that, and then you cost them thousands of dollars, probably millions of dollars if you tally it all up. So you mean to tell me that a Democratic Shield took the money and didn't get black folks to vote for Kamala? Oh, hell no. Hell no. That is grounds of dismissal. So I'm telling you now, within the next six months, you're going to start seeing these folks drop it like flies. Trust me. Joy Reid about to get fired. Y'all see the way white folks is on her? Megan Kelly, all of them is roasting the hell out of her. Sonny Hodson's on there reading goddamn ransom notes on The View, and nobody likes her. The Democratic shields are over. The tethers are over. And nobody's going to be paying attention to the point where their ass is outside and it's about to get cold. You been seeing that, Marcel? Yeah, I've been seeing that. And hey, I was just reading another article that says ever since Obama, the black vote has steadily decreased for the Democratic Party. Um, a lot of these people are just upset because they were hoping that they would get a cushy position with the Kamala administration had she won, even though all indicators were showing that she was not going to win. Even a poll that her head had her head by only like one or two percent. Trump tends to do far better than how he is polled by at least four to five percentage points. So they should have known that Trump was going to win. Now, I want to say something interesting. Notice how all of the states where Con Mala won, for what I have seen, are states that do not require a voter ID. You know, the Democrats have tried to use us, freedmen, as an excuse about why we should not have voter ID laws. Yet our people use our ID all the time. Hell, most of us have a license. When we go and pick up medication, we need an ID. If we go out for a drink, we need an ID. Hell, if we're traveling, especially now, even domestically, you're going to need an ID, your passport. We use an ID in every area of our life, but they stay trying to make us the reason why they are against voter ID. No, they're against voter ID because they want these illegals to get some votes in. I find that quite interesting. And the fact that every bill that has been proposed to make it to where only citizens should be allowed to vote and to require a voter ID. The Democrats are against both of them. And then you have those states, usually these states where Kamala won, that takes all damn day to count the vote. I think she lost far worse than what we actually will ever know. I really do believe they play with the vote. I, 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 I don't put that uh, be, I, be, I don't put at behind, uh, beyond any party to do Republicans or the Democrats. But I feel the Democrats actually do it more than the Republicans. And I think that Con Mala actually lost even worse than what we realize. And you know what I find funny? The Democrats 
just got slaughtered. I mean, slaughtered. Again, popular vote, they lost. Electoral vote, lost. Senate, lost. House, lost. And they are still doubling down on supporting things that has been made very clear is not popular with the American people. They're still sitting there going all out for illegal immigrants who are not citizens. You got that the mayor of Denver, Colorado, saying he's willing to go to jail to defend illegal immigrants who would not even defend their own nation and who would not defend our nation if we needed them. If things went south in America, these illegals would get the hell up out of here and go to another nation of which they can leash off of. They don't come to America because they love America. They come to America because they want to leech off of America. America. Matter of fact, during the Great Recession, when things went downhill during the Bush administration, illegals start going back to their native land. They didn't say, let me stay in America and help Americans back on its feet. They took their two damn feet and got the hell out. Then you got that Karen Bass. I can't stand that woman. The mayor of L.A., who was in the U.S. House, she sit in there and made double down on them being a sanctuary state and saying they will not cooperate, they will not direct police officers to cooperate with federal authorities. That new guy, Tom, is it, I don't know if it's Holman or Harmon, I don't know, I think it's, Ho, uh, how is it pronounced? you know Alpha? Yes, yeah, Tom Holman. Tom Holman, okay, so it is Tom Holman. Tom Holman has said that they're going to be on the wrong side of history and that they will pursue a federal legislation against them as well. So they may very well end up going to jail. And what a remarkable day that will be. Don't ever let these Democrats tell you they're not pursuing reparations because it's unpopular it will never pass. Because illegal immigration is unpopular with Americans of all, of both sides. Those who lean more Democrat and those who lead more Republican. Nearly 70% of Americans say that those are illegally should be deported. And yet they're doubling down, tripling down on defending these illegals. They have more fight for these illegals than they've ever shown for us. They were going to sit there and vote for more of that. I'm so happy the Democrats crash and burn. I wish more pain for the Democrats because all they've meant for us is pain. Absolutely, 100%. Y'all see how hard the Democrats go for these other communities? They willing to lose elections and still push. But I'm going to give a little update and a newsflash for everybody out there. If they think that they are about to fight against this mass deportation and we're just not going to cooperate. Because remember, sanctuary city just means harboring a fugitive. That's all that means. All you got to do with the Democrats is just exchange the words. All right. Anytime they say foreign aid. OK, what that really is, is reparations. When you see the Ukrainians get billions of dollars to repair their country from their conflict with Russia, repair means what? Reparations. So they're going to try to fight everything with these sanctuary cities and they're going to lose funding. Up. And the funding that they lose locally, all of those voters are going to vote them out. This is not 2016 where you have a 50-50. The whole damn country went red. So if you think you're going to fight them funds, when Mr. Borders are come, you're going to run out of money and then you're going to run out of a job. Go ahead, brother. Then we got a K-Hiver whining in the comments. And I'm not even going to address the tweet they made because they got something to say. They can come in here. I'm not going to address what they've stated, but I'm going to call them out by name. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, let me see what it was this K Hyper. Let me see their Twitter tag. Oh, did they delete it? Because you know that, oh, woke AF? Come on in here. Say what you have to say. Come on in here and request a mic. Say what you have to say. I thought, like, why won't Marcel for Congress address this? I'm not addressing nothing you have to say. Because if you really want to say it, you will request a mic, come in here and say it to me. So come up here and say what you have to say. I'm not responding to anything. I'm not going to waste time tweeting back and forth with you some disingenuous argument, trying to tell you the whole boogeyman, Republican bad, orange man bad. I'm tired of that. Your whole argument about why we should continue voting for the Democrats after 60 years of us falling further to the bottom is orange man bad. Oh, yeah. Come over here. Come here. Did you add them, Alpha? I can't add them for some reason. Yep. Yes, okay, we did. Come yes, we did. So we got Johnny and we got Woke AF. Alpha, I know you were talking, so I'm going to mute my microphone. Then we go to them. I can't wait to go to the Woke AF. Ask me some damn questions. Come here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're we, we going to go ahead. Johnny, go ahead. We're going to get to you in a minute. My brother cooking right now, so we're going to smoke. We got about 200 plus people in here. Woke, you was talking, so go ahead. 
Say what's I'm on here. your mind. I'm here. I'm here. So, so I'm not coming up here as a Kamala supporter or a Trump supporter because I didn't vote for either. Couldn't bring myself to do it. However, facts are facts, right? I mean, this literally happened where so many votes were challenged by the GOP. Millions of them were tossed out. It's a fact. It's a fact. So it's something for people to look into. I don't care where the fact comes from. If it's a fact, it's a fact. If it's a, a Democrat doing some dirty shit, a Republican, like that's what people need to stop doing is just looking at negative shit from the other party and start looking at the factual information from from all sides. OK, a lot of votes were thrown out. They were challenged by people from Canada based on a Jim Crow law that has not been messed with or thrown out or deleted or whatever you want to call it. An old Jim Crow law that allows anyone, they don't have to be a United States citizen to challenge votes in the United States. So what did the GOP do? They hired hundreds of agents, some of them from Canada, to come into the United States and challenge votes, most of which were black votes. And this is a fact. Okay, so one, woke AF, not attacking you, because I really wasn't, even though, you know, sometimes I come off aggressively. But no, I'm not, and I didn't come up here to attack Right, you. I'm not attacking you, but I am going to, we're going to have an intellectual discourse. I come off aggressively, but, I, but I'm glad you didn't take my tone personally. But let me ask you two things. One, who up here has been promoting the Republican Party? Can you tell me? Because I don't know. Alpha, have you been promoting the Republican Party? Hell no. Yeah, I, I, I called them the Republicans. I've said that several times. Who's been promoting the GOP? Can you tell me? Well, yeah, I'm not going to say you're promoting them per se, but yeah, it's a little bit of a victory lap right now. So whoever beat them is kind of assumed to be, you know, doing the victory lap you're celebrating and who won the election so anyways it's fine i, I get it a lot of people a lot of people recognize that there's on both sides well, yeah, both right. so, a, a nice way to say wait it, yeah. hold on no that's the thing so let me ask you a question are you just a, disgr a disgruntled democrat when you vote have you typically voted for the democrats in the past, yes. I can tell. Because even though you acknowledge that both parties are trash, usually disgruntled, Demo disgruntled Democrats, you're not a Democrat, a Democrat is just the leadership. I don't call people who vote for the Democrats Democrats. Usually, people who are angry with the Democrats and do not vote for them, but they hear us criticizing them and celebrating the fact that they crash and burn and they get they feel a little provoked. Those are usually people who still have some sort of emotional attachment to the Democrats. Well, yeah, I could see why. I could see why. But here's I could see why you would. Well, hold on. But it was not. It wasn't. Because no one up here has promoted the Republicans. We acknowledge they're terrible. But I will tell you this. The Democrats are a hell of a lot worse. The Republicans are not taking 85 to 95 percent of the black vote, wagging their fingers at us, acting like they're entitled to our vote. The Republicans don't do that. I'm not going to say the Republicans are the answer. No, the Republicans are terrible, too. But you know what I find funny? I will say that Black America has already spoken and said that the Republicans are better. Because even though most Black votes may go to the Democratic Party, do you know where most Black people are moving to? States like Texas, states like Georgia, states like South Carolina, states like Florida, states that are ran by Republicans, red states. So I say that Black America is waking up and saying, you know what? Damn this, the Republicans, they don't look out for us. They don't say nothing to us. But the Democrats get our votes and we get their neglect while other groups get specific policies that should go to us. So which one? And that's exactly why I'm no longer a Democrat. Right. And I'm not even black. Most people know that. But yeah, I'm not even black. But I, I yeah, okay. so there's many reasons. But that's a that's that's a primary reason why, because once you see it, you can't unsee it there. Their racism okay, so is, ask, what's your what's your race? I am uh, uh, clear. You want to call me clear? You can call me. Okay. What's your ethnicity? Quit, quit plan. Yeah. Quit plan. Go ahead and tell. Answer the question. Quit plan. What's your ethnicity? Um. Well, I'm a. Uh, I, I'm 
I mean, uh, but I don't like using it anymore because it's just a racial construct. Okay, so you're, you're, you're yeah. a yeah. woman. Yeah. Are you uh, French, Italian, German, Dutch? Like, do you know that? I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, so my first ancestor actually was um, a Moravian mission with the Moravian mission with the Cherokees. So they came here in the early, uh, the late 1600s, and they settled in their own area near the Cherokees in Georgia. Okay. So After they lived, uh, hold on, they lived for decades in peace with the Indians, with Cherokees. And then the Cherokees actually requested, and I have this documentation, that um, they wanted- Okay, 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 okay. Listen, listen, listen. You asked me a question. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, you answered it, you answered it. So you're a Karen, I got you. No, All right, no, so no, as a Karen, hold on. Okay, as a Karen, hold on. what gives you the right to come in our space and try to okay. go okay. back and forth? So, here, so if you don't want to receive- Hold on, Alpha, the real quick, let me say something else. Let me get to the second point real quick. About that law that you mentioned, that Jim Crow era law, you're getting mad at the GOP for using that law to get black votes thrown out. And if if what you say is true, that's terrible. But here's the bigger question. The Democrats have had control over Congress, had control over Congress for the most part from 19, the mid-1950s to the mid-1990s. They had agree. the control over Congress then. Then they got control back over Congress when Obama first got in office, then when so Joe Crow Biden first got in office. The Democrats even had a Democratic presidency where they had control over all layers of the federal government. Why did they not get rid of that Jim Crow law? That was the first thing I said out of my mouth when I found out that mm -hmm. they were using that. So that was the first thing I said. Why the f does this exist? And we know who's been okay, in control. So now, so do you see? So, again, the Republicans not getting black votes. The Republicans don't go around acting like they're entitled to our vote. The Democrats go around doing all that finger wagging and, peak, and groups like the Gay Hive go around and do all that cursing at us and calling us the N-word and things like that. So that's why the Democrats are worse. Because if the Democrats were really a, were looking out for freemen, black Americans, they would have gotten rid of that Jim Crow law. The reason they keep it on the books because they are just as much in and keeping us to the bottle as the Republicans are. Now to Alpha's question, though. Alpha, you go ahead and ask us. I can't ask it better than you can. Okay, I can simply do that. Thank you very much for that, Ali, my brother. Um, Miss Karen, what gives you the right to come in here and intellectually debate us or disagree with us about foundational Black American political issues? <laughs> I didn't disagree with you about anything foundational. You didn't black disagree? American, number one, I came up here, I made a comment. No, 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 no. Let's I see right here in the comment section. Let's I see right here in the comment section, you said that they did not give Ukraine reparations. That's what you said. Yes, and I, welcome. That's I a complete know, yes, disagreement. Yes, that's you. actually a lie. No, no, no. $182 billion to repair your country or to stop your country from being decimated in their eyes. That's reparations. The funds reparations. were recovered from Russia, dumbass. I don't care. First off, you can uh, on Ken's, okay, because I know it's about three inches long. All right. So you can go ahead and do that and you can bow all the way down and watch who you're talking to. And don't be mad because you're trying to f Mendingo and Mendingo sent your ass home and didn't even give you a whopper. All right. So be quiet when I'm talking. Black man talking. Karen, be quiet. Checkmate. Now, I want everybody to notice this. Y'all see how she came in here disingenuous as a woman trying to talk about foundational black American issues. Mad and upset because deep down inside, she's a Democrat undercover and she doesn't want to admit it the same way she doesn't want to admit that she was letting Marquise and Jerome off in her mouth last night. OK, and we all know that happened. That's OK. So while she was watching. All right. And she was enjoying some black man dingo. All right. And she was throwing a bunch of at the camera because she's mad that Kamala Harris lost and black folks didn't vote Democrat. That's what it's really about. And we see you from a mile away. You are in no position to talk about foundational black Americans in politics. What you should be doing is preparing some Brussels sprouts and some tuna casserole for Thanksgiving and finding the meth pipe that's under your daughter's mattress. That's what you should be doing right now. All right. So you tell your daughter that mommy's been a bad mommy, Karen, because she's been too worried about Mandingo's dick instead of worrying about the stick that her daughter has. 
So you can go ahead and get the hell on out of here and watch who you're talking to because I am Black Alpha Network. Checkmate. These people don't know what they're basically talking about. She came up here being a habitual line stepper. First of all, you don't come in nobody's space, especially a foundational Black American man's space. And this just goes to show you that folks like this, they don't have anything to be... Well, uh, she, she threw me off when she just came in here being disrespectful. And I do want to thank Black Alpha Network for, you know, hitting up with a Stone Cold Stunner. But people like that, that coming up in here talking about what we need to do and what we don't need to do, you clearly have seen that the Democratic Party has been giving out trillions, if not more than that, of money and resources to these foreign nations. And this just goes to show you that people like that, they don't bring anything significant to the table, let alone to any political realm, let alone into any conversation, because we can see that she's not smarter than a fifth grader. So I'm just going to land my plan. And, you know, I just came up here to be female energy because I could tell that something was wrong and there weren't any more females on stage. So I came here to support you and Brother Marcel until some more females get on stage. Thank you very much, my sister, Nikki. Absolutely, y'all. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when, when we tell everybody that we out here smoking on that K-High, I guess she thought it was a Karen pack. All right, that's the Karen pack. Well, the Karen pack done got smoked too, okay? So while she's smoking on the soul pole tonight, okay, she can understand the fact that she came around us and she got her ass checked in the goddamn process. That's what we do, y'all. These people cannot come around us politically or socially. And those days are over. Those days are over. See, this is the Democrats right there. This is what we've been saying about the Democrats. Everything that she was saying was and then she tried to go on this whole history lesson. Well, my cousin's great grandma was an in Cherokee and the Navajos introduced us to him. Man, damn all that. You are Karen. You're a Democratic shield. And deep down inside, you're mad because that black vote didn't go for Kamala. And anytime they start hitting people with the I don't like either side, you know, they like the Democrats. That's what that is. She just knew that this ain't the space to come out here and be in the forefront with it. So this is the prime example of these Democratic operatives, especially white ones who ain't got no business coming into our political atmosphere and having any form of conversation with us. It don't work that goddamn way. And that same type of checking and just cutting to the point, right? When you come around us, you just bow your goddamn head and you be thankful that you're even in a country that we created. Anything other than that, I ain't trying to hear it and I ain't listening to it. This is the era of foundational black American excellence, whether they like it or not. Marcel, I want to point out something that you told her and then she tried to run a whole up. You always talk about reparations and you always talk about it. You got a great reparations plan. You broke it down. Did you notice, know family, that she was trying to run the game, that foreign aid and all that ain't reparations or basically trying to tell us that the money isn't there for us, but it's there for the Ukraine? Did you catch that part? Yep, caught it right away. First of all, it is damn reparations. Repar but we're repairing something that we did not break. Truth be told, we don't got nothing to do with that war there in Ukraine. But not only is it reparations, they're even the even the loans that they've made to the Ukraine, because not only have they just given them money, they've also given them loans. They're trying to cancel the loans. So they're even adding on to the reparations as we speak. Right now, Sojo Crow is trying to cancel like $5 billion worth of loans that were given to Ukraine. So they're still giving them reparations as we speak. They found money for them right away. And they keep, she keeps talking about, oh, by the way, that money with Ukraine, a lot of it has been, has gone unaccounted for. Like they don't even know on what they spent it. That's about you know, that's par for the course because the Pentagon has failed this audit for like the seventh damn time. Trillions of dollars and the Pentagon cannot account for that money. And yet people would worry about if we're going to be responsible with our reparations that we are due. And let me make it very clear. This is not an echo chamber. So we welcome people who may have differing opinions. We feel free to come up here and we can have that back and forth. But don't come up here trying to finger wag and trying to do it passive aggressively. You see, if we were not sharp, I can tell she's used to dealing with people who are not sharp. She came up here talking about the Republicans are taking advantage of the Jim Crow law. And then when I asked her if the Republicans are bad for taking advantage of that Jim Crow law, the Democrats are worse for allowing that Jim Crow law to still be in existence where they had the opportunity to get rid of it. I'm not looking at the bad guy and wondering why the bad guy is doing bad things. I'm going to look at the good guy and wonder why the good guy is allowing the bad guy to do the bad things and 
why the good guy is sitting there making it easy for the bad guy to do bad things or even working with them. And then she said, oh, yeah, that's the first thing I say when I when I found out about the law. Why have the Democrats, why have they allowed that? If that was the first thing you said when you found out about that law, that would have been the first thing you said when you came up here. But it was not. So this is not an echo chamber. But if you come up here being passive aggressive, trying to throw little subtle digs, you will get called out on that. It seemed like she was talking mad mess about you in the comments. She, it's like she had some issue specifically with you, Marcel. The gay hive has had issues with me from the beginning. The first space I did was with Nas, and it was called Kamala is a train wreck. And ever since then, I was on the hive's radar. They have done spaces talking about me, you know, trying to get me to come into the little troll spaces where they're throwing, you know, graffiti and sprinkles all around, and I never, ever want to go in there. And now, hive has issues with me because I continue to call out the Democratic Party. You know, it only got worse when I ran against Clybum, but I'm still calling out the Democratic Party. I don't need to run for office to hold people accountable. That's something we have to learn. We need to be holding these people accountable, and that's something they did not do. Had they been holding the Democratic Party accountable, they probably would not have gotten slaughtered like they just did. We love you, Marcel. Yes, yeah, salute to you, brother Marcel. Yeah, much respect, brother. You already know, family. Yeah, they be mad. They be mad. They got a whole list of people that they're upset at. And it's everybody that's standing on business politically. And you're right, Marcel. She also tried to do in the beginning of basically trying to pigeonhole us as Republicans. And that's another one of the tactics that they like to use. The whole, you sound like a damn Trump supporter. Remember, ain't it funny that they was telling us that we was getting paid by Donald Trump? Yeah, like Donald Trump's going to pay us. Okay, yeah. And hell, they even say we was getting paid by Russia. But then you come to find out Kamala was paying all of them. You know what I'm saying? So it shows you a hit dog going to holler. What's done in the dark come to light. And that's the main tactic that they use. You sound like a Trump supporter opposed to really you are a Democratic shill and you want to point the finger at everybody instead of pointing the finger at your damn self. Well, I'm going to point the finger over there in the unemployment line because that's where every one of them is heading. And she thought she was going to talk to us the same way she talks to her political property. Clyburn ain't up in here. Roland Martin ain't up in here. Van Jones ain't up in here. You're going to have to deal with some real deal certifieds. Anytime you speak to us and this is the new generation that the Democrats are going to have to get used to what you're dealing with now, y'all, is a bunch of people who can't deal with the fact that this ain't the African-American no goddamn more. And you can't minority or people of color us. There's a rude awakening coming to the United States of America straight up and down. And they seen it during the election. But we've been saying it for the last five to 10 years. But it arrived on America's doorstep. Now, whether they want to answer that goddamn door or not, we're going to do what we always do. We're going to kick that and these people getting ran out the paint consistently by all of us consistently, that's setting the precedence that no longer are you going to disrespect us, lie to us, and no longer are you going to get us to just do all the labor. The only thing that we going to do is gas up the goddamn car, drive to the bank, and go cash these reparations checks. And anything other than that, that don't mean nothing to us. We got a new speaker in here. Um, outstanding, Brandon. It's on you. Peace, power, reparations. Delineation, uh, B1, Alpha, Black Alpha. Uh, I want to stay, I want to uh, uh, piggyback off one thing I heard earlier today when, the, when uh, you was elaborating on uh, uh, the Hispanic, the Hispanics, the Hispanic vote is the one that carried uh, Trump to his victory. That's a lie. It don't even seem right. Why would they, why would they vote towards their demise? I just wanted to uh, get off. Of, I just wanted to speak on that. Well, who, I'm sorry, you said someone up here said that? No, Black Alpha was, uh, Black, Black Alpha was, no, he didn't, he was saying it uh, hypothetically or whatever. He was, uh, but uh, I'm saying like, uh, he, had, he had stated that, uh, that uh, they're, they're trying to say that uh, the Hispanics, the Hispanic vote had carried uh, Trump to victory, Trump to, Trump to victory. I'm like, it didn't even, like, he got to, it wouldn't even make sense for the for 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 nobody to even say that. So you know, there's someone in the uh, who is in the reparations movement, and I have respect for them. I have no issues with them, but they've been going around saying, and this is the type of stuff that happens. You know, Tariq likes to say plebiscite babbling. And I guess this is a perfect example. There's someone who goes around saying, even if every uh, registered black voter would have voted for Kamala, she still would have lost. And they had no data. 
Come to find out, all they needed was a 2% increase in the black vote, and Khan Mala would have won. On the topic of the Hispanic and Latino vote, one thing we need to understand, y'all, is that we are codified people. Could we benefit from being more codified? Absolutely. Do we need to be more codified? Yes, we do. But we are still a relatively codified people, and we move and think as a collective. That's not something that exists in other groups. They know how to think as a collective as far as it comes to harassing us. When it comes to being against us, oh, yes, these other groups know how to get codified really, really, really quick. Outside of that, they're not. So some of these Hispanic and Latinos, they have relatives who are here illegally, and they don't care. Their attitude is very individualistic. So they're not thinking about themselves as a collective. They're thinking about themselves as an individual. So, yes, some of them did vote for Trump, knowing that he might very well deport their relatives, and they don't give a damn. It's not just Hispanic and Latinos, Asians, and even people, because there are illegal immigrants from nations that are predominantly and even some of these black voters and i don't want to get into the debate about who's black but some of these black voters who are black immigrants who are uh, have been in america long enough and they can vote now so they don't probably vote for trump knowing that some of their relatives can very well be deported see other groups they can be very, very individualistic. We are still, rel relatively speaking, a communal people, and we think about ourselves as the collective. That's something that's beautiful about us. And while, again, we definitely need to be more codified, but I do think we are still relatively a codified people. And as far as I'm saying, the Hispanic Latinos, they're never going to try to give us credit. They don't want us to recognize our power. If we recognize our power politically, they know the whole damn game is going to change. But it's too late. We are recognizing our power, and we have only just recently started to use them in these modern times. Go ahead, Brother EJ. I'm glad Brother Marcel said that, too, because a lot of these other groups, they don't think the same way. They always have different political you know, associations when it comes to how they vote. Um, the majority of black American brothers and sisters have been voting the same way for the past, you know, 50 plus years. And we are now starting to delineate away from the Democratic Illuminati Party. And this just goes to show you that the power that we have when we get on code and we get focused and we got a main objective to get to. A lot of these other groups, they can't do that. They're so stuck in different conflicts, not only going on within their homeland, but conflicts of them having different things that they want as benefits within America. So they're going to be scattered on what things they want for their communities. But most of the time, they're going to be separate and not be um, thinking of the same objective as black Americans are. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the people running around here trying to put that off on the Latinos. The Latinos did what they've done every election. Every single election, you're going to get half of them going to go this way, half of them going to go that way. Remember, Joe Biden just, what, five or six years ago when he was saying the Latino community is different than the black community and all that stuff. What happened is, is that they put all of their eggs in the Latino basket, and we've been telling everybody for years, Latinos do not subscribe to the Democrats' version of supremacy. They don't do this game of we're going to pretend to be cool with black people like the Democrats do. Because in their homelands, they're more of the Republican style. They're more open, in your face. We don't give a damn. They're not down in Puerto Rico or Venezuela playing with black folks. They're not out here trying to make it look like we all friend to get votes or straight ruthless towards dark skinned Latinos. Their racism is cut and dry. So when they come to the United States of America, they look at the Republican style and say, hey, I relate to that more because they want to be they want to be themselves. So they're going to align with a party that is strictly person that you typically see opposed to like. Democrats, you know, that try to pull that stuff, but they be lying. So the Latinos want to get on board with that. And then they, they end up voting in that process. What ended up happening, and we call that, by the way, it's another thing the grassroots has said that's been accurate. We ended up saying that a lot of the Latinos, they wanted to close the borders. They had Latinos for Trump. They was out here rapping and all types of stuff. The videos was ridiculous. But we knew that they were going to vote for Trump uh, regardless. The main factor is what Marcel was just saying. It came down to black Americans. And I've been saying it for the longest time. It does not matter if we have seven, eight, nine, ten. There's this old notion that if black Americans, you know, vote for the Democrats, we're going to do it anyway. All we had to do was two to three percent. If that three is four or five, then the Democrats are done. They can't afford to lose three, four percent of the black vote. And Kamala Harris lost that, especially in totality. So we had power 
in this election that all we had to do was just decrease the Democrat votes by two to three percent. And you can see in Georgia, that was it. That was the final straw. Two to three percent, y'all. Two to three percent of black Americans not voting for the Democrats and they will lose all the time. Problem is now that two to three percent is going to grow to three to four to five percent. Five is eventually going to be to seven percent. And once they get to those numbers and we reach that threshold, the Democrats will never win an election again. And it's the results of you being disrespect, uh, disrespectful to your number one voter block. If you disrespect your number one voter block and you elevate everybody else above us, then, you know, the chickens going to come home to roost. And that's exactly what's been happening during this election cycle. It really mattered that foundational black Americans said, nah, we're going to vote for the couch. Or some of them said, we're going to vote for Trump. And everything that we said came true. And we all sitting here right now in a world where Kamala Harris is gone. You don't see her. Uh, she disappeared. You can't find her. And it's all because foundational black Americans exposed her. She's embarrassed right now. Of course, you don't want to show her face. Where I'm from, when people don't want to show their face, they're embarrassed. That's really what it is, y'all. Kamala's embarrassed. The, I never in my life seen a vice president just take time off and go on a vacation. I've never seen that. Never. When Al Gore was running against George W. Bush in 2000 and he lost and all that crazy stuff that happened down in Florida, he didn't just take a damn vacation and just go away. No, he carried out his duties. That's why I say right now, who the hell is running America? I don't even know who's running America right now. Joe Biden was so old, they said he couldn't even run for re-election. So if he's so old that he can't run for re-election, Kamala Harris is the next person. She's gone. What the hell's happening? I'm going to tell you what it is. It's that foundational black Americans, we won to the point that we made them all disappear. If that ain't a grassroots victory family, I don't know what is. Go ahead, Marcel. You know what's funny? I do think that there is something to celebrate. You have Biden keeping for our Hispanics and Latinos all this time. Only for them to do a major shift towards Trump. I got to hand it to the Hispanic and Latino community. They, they, they did good. They did well there. They were like, y'all done let us come in this nation. Let us have anchor babies. Gave us all the praise that should have gone to your most loyal constituency, who are unfortunately Black American freemen, because that's, that's, that's not something I'm proud of. I don't want us to wear that crown. Only for Hispanic Latinos to vote for Trump in overwhelming numbers. So there is something for that. Every time they try to do us wrong, it backfires on them. And I wish some even more pain will come up in here and have something to say. But they are still burying their face in their pillow that's wet from their tears. And as far as, what's that lady's name? That Nikki Barnes woman? Anyway, she's so awesome, she hasn't been crashing out. This lady right now, I just saw a tweet that somebody sent me because we're saying that we cannot be deported. She's saying that we should be against Trump's mass immigration deportations plans because we could be deported too. That tells me that she's probably a goddamn tether. And she's probably afraid she's going to be denaturalized and deported her damn self. Trying to always conflate illegals who are criminals with us as black American freemen who have been in this nation for centuries and built this nation. Why is she not saying that to the Hispanic and Latino community? Go tell them that. They are the group that still largely has a lot of immigrants in their families, not us. So you are crashing out because we didn't do as we're told. Cry more. Cry more. <laughs> Hell no. Hey, another thing, family. On top of all of that, they know that they've all been embarrassed. So they know Foundation Black Americans. We remember everything. We see and we hear everything. And I'm telling you, I've seen all of the tweets um, that y'all been putting out after the election. And methodically, one by one by one, y'all was just picking shields. It didn't even matter. It was like, let me go ahead and get Luke. OK, I'm going to go ahead and check his ass. And somebody else, when I went down my timeline, they was getting Vanessa Jones, Angela Rye. Angela Rye and Tiffany Cross were just crying. They were on their podcast crying. Family, we got these people crying. We smoking that K-Hive pack to the point that they crying. Literally. It ain't a game. It's serious, family. Their employment is based on foundational Black Americans. We control their destiny. It's got to be a terrible, terrible thing to have the people that you hate the most control whether your ass eats tonight. That's got to be terrible. You know, Roland really cares about eating tonight and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and yesterday. So the very fact is, 
We can simply say, we're not going to vote for the Democrats. We're going to G-check all the Democratic shields. Y'all going to get punished and penalized by not getting us to vote. And then you're going to all get eviction notices and pink slips. And that's exactly what's occurred. And I'd be damned if we didn't say this was going to happen a month ago, two months ago, three months ago. Every single thing that we said was going to go down went down. That's why this is foundational black American season. And everybody has to deal with it. What you're really seeing is a lot of these folks are upset. The fact that a new era has came in and out with the old. They wish that they can go back to the old days. When they get on their knees and they pray to Joe Biden tonight, okay, they're going to wish that they can go back to the days where the church had power. They don't. Where the Democratic Shield had power. They don't. Where the boule, all them folks. And if you look at the boule, the boule done. I'm telling you, family, with one election, we ended so many people including the tethers because they're afraid and they got to go home. So it's a beautiful day to be FBA. And if you certified, you certified all the time. Sir Funk, go ahead, brother. What's up, family? Peace to the room. Uh, I just had two quick hits. First of all, uh, congratulations to all of those uh, shills and 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 ups who got six and seven figure uh, six and seven figure bags. And my advice to you is learn how to invest. Oh, and by the way, don't make it in real estate because, you know, that's about to crash next. But, yeah, go ahead and enjoy your little pack and, you know, or go ahead and enjoy your little bag. But, you know, it's probably the last one you're going to get. So, yeah, invest wisely. And the other thing is, um, you know, being out here on the West Coast and and being, you know, being amongst the white hot center of, you know, left or blue blue politics. Uh, a lot of my customers, uh, a, a lot of my customer account base is these people. And, you know, I've heard them. I, I hear them talking all the time. Yeah, they're they're bewildered. I mean, because they live in such a they, they live in, in in they live in a silo where they can't even imagine that, you know, the rest of the country uh, overwhelmingly rejected everything that, you know, K-Hive was about. And, you know, the, and, and, and the Democrats were about and, you know, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to take their money. And there's just a there's just there's just this like, you know, cocky smirk that I, this is cocky smirk that I uh, have going lately where I when, when I'm dealing with them. I'm just like, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm no, I've, I've never been I've never been down with your program. I'm not down with it now. And, you know, you're losing. But, you know, keep writing my check. You're 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 fine. You're fine. Uh, and, uh, that's, you know, those, those are the two things that, those are the two things I noticed. Also, uh, when I was, when I was younger in, in, in the eighties and nineties, I lived down in Miami and I could have told you, I could, I, I, I could have told the democratic party right then and there that, yeah, you don't have the Latino vote. You never had the Latino vote because I mean, immediately after the Cubans landed ashore and, you know, were and, and, and were staked, we're staked all of the land and uh, and 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 financial privileges of being a buffer class minority. They immediately turned Republican. I mean, it wasn't even like you know, it it, it was it didn't even take it didn't even take a one presidential administration. They were already hardcore Republican, and they voted they voted like that to this day. And uh, but you know, uh, apparently nobody got the memo at Democratic headquarters. Oh, also shout out to. Uh, shout out to Yvette Nicole Brown and Too Raw Too Real. Uh, you guys, uh, you know, uh, whatever little bag you got, uh, you know, make sure you make sure you don't spend it at therapy. And that's it. Y'all take care. Yeah, I'm much respect on the school. I'm glad they. I'm glad they're feeling the pain. I know that had to be a hard blow for them, and I hope right now that they're not taking it well. And speaking of California, California went damn near red itself. That shows that California drastically red, almost looking more like how California used to look in the 1970s. So that was something that I was quite surprised to see. And yet the Democrats are still doubling down on things that are not popular with the American populace, going all out to defending legals while they've never shown even 0.9% of that fight for freedmen. Marcel, let me ask you a question, brother. I'm going to ask you a question. I know you remember this, family. When we look at that map, and we see that map is nothing but red, including California, and you're right, that is shocking. The, the way California damn near went red, it lets you know. The Democrats cannot go back. I'm telling everybody, the Democrats are done. It's a wrap. It's over with. But, brother, you remember when we went to that MAGA Town Hall rally, right? 
And you remember that guy that was behind us talking and he was telling us how his family all shifted and they went from Democrat to Republican. And it's a whole change. And I think he was from, I want to say the East Coast. I want to say he was from New York. Did everything that guy told us about the side not come true when you seen that map, brother? It was absolutely true. He said everyone in his family, from the youngest member to the oldest member, went from being staunch Democrats to staunch Republicans, but alpha. And I hope none of you, all of you should know me well enough now to know that I'm not going to say things just for the sake of saying things. I promise y'all, every Black South Carolinian with whom I spoke, all of them are at least happy the Democrats lost or voted for Trump. The ones that selected the couch, they're happy the Democrats lost. So the ones that I know voted, they voted for Trump. This is in South Carolina. The only people I know who probably voted for the Democrats are the elderly. This is South Carolina. The Democrats took a beating in South Carolina. The Republicans already had a supermajority. A supermajority means there is nothing the other party can do to stop you. They don't need to consider the other party at all. The Republicans already had a supermajority here in South Carolina. They added four seats in the Senate. Four seats. And they picked up a number of houses, I mean, excuse me, seats in the, in the House. So there really is a shift happening. In South Carolina, is open. It's pretty much a third black, around the same as Georgia, and yet became even even redder. So there's definitely a shift happening, and I'm glad to see it. I am glad, glad, glad to see it. The change is coming. The change is matter of fact. The change is here. The change is here. And the Democrats thought that they were going to fall back on black Americans. See, that's what they thought. They thought during this election, when Joe Biden had to step down, and let's be real again, Joe Biden had to step down because of us, because we were the main ones saying that this man was not equipped to be the president. He was too old. And it literally took a debate for him to piss down his leg. Literally, it took a debate for that to happen for everybody to be like, you know what? Maybe he's too old. And let's not forget, y'all, the black Democrats were the only people that were saying that Joe Biden was good enough to stay around. Because remember, the black Democrats will go down with the plantation. They don't know anything other than plantation. They say, we will go down with the plantation no matter what. The black Democrats were out here still saying that Joe was good to go. And then eventually all the Americans were like, okay, it's true, he's too old, step down. George Clooney put out that thing and then two days later, Joe Biden stepped down. But we were the ones on the forefront of saying this man had to go. We were the ones on the forefront of saying that Kamala Harris wasn't black, she was not qualified, immigration, you name it. Every single subject and topic in this election the foundational black American grassroots were the main ones calling it out. You can go and look at everybody's timeline. Just go ahead and do a check. You can look at all of ours. Look at Marcel. Look at mine. Look at Nikki. Look at EJ. Look at Black Truth United. OK, look at all of us. My brother, Church of Black Power. Go look at our timelines and then you can look and say, God damn, they called it. Every single thing they said, going back to Joe Biden dropping out. Every single thing they said ended up happening. That's because we're accurate because we don't play. When you boo, that's when you're wrong. When you speak that real shit, that means you're right. And we've been right this whole election. So since we predicted all of those, I got another prediction going into the future, y'all. And this is simple and plain. You will not see from a guy who has not came up yet, but yes, we smoke in this pack too. And that's that Barry Obama pack, all right? Where Obama at right now? Because word on the street is that he hopped on a damn plane and him and Michelle got the hell out of America. Word on the street is that the civil war amongst the Democrats, everybody's looking at Obama saying, you were our chief of rounding up black people. How come you didn't round up the black folks, Barry? We got some questions for you, Barry. Maybe we don't need you no more, Barry. When the Democrats can't keep foundational black Americans on the plantation, they turn on each other. The same way the tethers can't tether onto us, we untether them. Now they turning on each other. Illegals can't come here and get resources based on us. So now they turning on each other. They call an ice on each other. Everybody in America is infighting except for foundational black Americans. So Obama's out the paint, him and Michelle, and all the tethers are about to be out the paint. And the Democratic plantation is out of business. My brother, Black Truth United, it's on you. May I say something real quick? Where is Fanatic? 
I heard that he keeps bringing my name up. This guy named Fanatic, he thinks he's one of those intellectuals, and he's one of those disgruntled Democrats that are mad because we are holding the Democrats accountable, and I guess he feels we don't criticize the Republicans enough. Let me tell you one goddamn thing. I'm not going to say a goddamn word about the Republicans. All of my smoke will be for the Democrats, because the Democrats pretty much get all of the black votes that are casted. So you got damn right, I'm going to criticize the Democrats, and I'm happy Kamala laws, and I don't smoke. I ain't never smoke a day in my life. I'm a smoker that Kamala pack. Where fanatic? Are you listening? Come up here. Since you, keep, I heard you keep name dropping me. Oh, I hear y'all are. You know, I called out both sides. It's not like you, you know, and Marcel are pushing the Republicans. Come up here if you're listening on your burn account. Feel free to come up here too. I ain't no, I ain't no folks can listen on track phones, Marcel. You don't talk me something new today, man. I thank you, brother. Truth and <laughs> it. I'm sorry. You go ahead. No problem. Salute to you, brother. Greg Marcel Dixon, salute brother Black Alpha. All right, yeah, this is a public service announcement, family. Call ICE and call them twice. This is, we got to smoke that tether pack all the way. 866 347 2423. That's 866 347 2423. Write that number down. Every single certified foundational Black American needs to have that phone number in their phones. And now is not the time to be, you know, shucking and jiving and, you know, tearing up in the eyes, playing the violins, you know, knee shaking and everything, getting scared of power. Now is the time to take power. Now is the time to report this illegal activity. We need to change the wording on this stuff. I mean, we're, we're looking at these people and we're not realizing we're looking at felons. We're looking at people who broke federal law to be in this country. All these businesses, all of these uh, companies that are using these illegal immigrants. Remember, Tyson, all these people need to be reported. All uh, any suspicious activity reported. We need to have quotas, man. We need to when we have the opportunity. We don't know how long we're going to have this with Trump, you know, using the military and everything. When we're in a position, we need to take advantage of it. So again, that's 866-347-2423, 866-347-2423, and I'll drop down. Thank you. I'm glad that you gave out the number like you in a Mike Jones music video. Salute to you, brother. You, you took it back to 2003, 2004, and 05. My brother gave out the, yes, he gave out the number. Hey, brother, we got to get you to do a commercial family. That shit was good as hell. You, hey, you about to have me make my whole family call tonight, brother. <laughs> I've actually been making commercials, brother. But yes. Hey, salute to all of you. I'm going to drop down. Thank you. Appreciate you, my good brother. Y'all make sure y'all follow my brother right there. Go ahead, Marcel. I think we have the Church of Black Power. How you all doing tonight? How things going, family? Pretty good. Much love, you? family. Blessings to the both of you. Blessings. Um, I just want to I'm gonna be very quick here. Um, I'll get back to studying, but there's some things that I really, really appreciate people saying. One, what our brother just said on the situation of making those phone calls to ice, ice baby. Make sure you got them on speed down. Because the truth of the matter is, we got a lot of people who are in higher positions saying that they're going to fight against, you know, the federal government. But that does not mean that we as a people have to let them fight against the federal government. They might not want to work with ICE, but guess what? We definitely can. But I've been having a lot of conversations with a lot of people as of late, and most of it has been circled around the question of why would we allow these races to get in the White House? And I want to pose a question for everyone to keep in their mind, for everyone who come to them with that same question. When did the Democrats, the Democrats, stop being racist? Because after we got out of slavery, it was Andrew Jackson that reversed the field order 15. After that, it was those same Democrats or the Dixiecrats who implemented the black codes, right? after which it was Woodrow Wilson who implemented Jim Crow. And after that, they implemented the Civil Rights Bill. However, they also implemented 
the whole, you know, immigration bill in order to water down our votes. So at what point did the Democrats stop being racist while we're sitting here concerned about the races on the right? And with that, our land family. That, yeah, exactly. Why would we allow this racist man to come in? First of all, the most racist man probably in modern history to hold the seat of the presidency is Joe Biden. The man is a mentee of Ku Klux Klan members. He wrote letters to them saying that they were his good friends. He worked with them to keep black kids out of better funded school, specifically the school his children attended. He did laws that specifically attacked forms, drugs, forms of drugs that were used by black people while pretty much decriminalizing that same drug just in a known form that was predominantly used by white people. All right? Then he tells people, black people, that if we don't vote for him, we ain't black. So the biggest damn bigot has already held the seat of the presidency. After Joe Biden, it's a tie probably between Lyndon B. Johnson and Obama. The only thing with Linda B. Johnson, Linda B. Johnson got things done that actually did benefit us. We should have taken advantage and capitalized on that and made it lineage based. But Linda B. Johnson may have been a bigot, but Linda B. Johnson was not afraid to use his power to get things done. The reason he was able to get civil rights legislation through is because he went to them and said, this is what you're going to do. Get it through. Or this is what I'm going to do to you. Obama was a bigot who saved wealth during the Great Recession, but did not save black wealth. And when it was found out that banks were still giving bad mortgages to black lenders, as there was a hearing on Congress, his administration pretty much said all we cared about was trying to save the banks. That was it. And he let black wealth, the little we had, create us. So Biden is the biggest bigot of all to hold the seat of the presidency than Obama. Now, where Trump ranks, I don't know where Trump would rank. We have yet to see. The truth be told, the issue people have with Trump, Trump says a lot of stupid things. He really does. And I expect Trump to say dumb things. The other issue people have with Trump is Trump has some very outwardly, blatantly racist supporters. That's definitely true. There's a lot of these MAGA people who are outright blatant bigots. They're not quiet bigots like the Democrats are. Liberals, I'm telling you, they're far worse than these MAGA people. They just move differently. You see, these MAGA people, they might be blatant with their anti-blackness. The Democrats don't move that way. Their anti-blackness is subtle and quiet. Their anti-blackness is one where we are saying this is what we need for our people. They'll say to you, oh, we can't do nothing for you and turn right around in your face and do it for everyone else while making sure everyone else is able to live and enjoy life fully. So, yeah, that one has always gotten me there. That whole Trump's a racist boogeyman speech, that ain't never had no impact on me whatsoever. Not at all. Hell, when have we not had a bigot in the White House? Name one damn president that has not been anti-Black American. People act like they just discovered that presidents could be bigots with Trump. Give me a break. All right, on code, you can unmute your microphone. Brother Marcel, Black Alpha, how y'all doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing all right. I got a, a quick question for you, Marcel. Um, based on off what you were saying about damn near every state going red, if that happens again, um, the next four year election, do you think that the Democrats finally will cave and give us our hate crime bill and reparations? And if not, what do you think will finally make them inch toward giving it us? I don't expect a damn thing from the Democrats. I just expect and hope for them to wither away slowly and painfully. I'm just going to be very honest with you. To answer your question, no, absolutely not. Right now, the Democrats just got slaughtered. They just got slaughtered. And they are still doubling down on doing nothing for us. They're doubling down 
on going all out for illegals, going all out for Israel, going all out for Ukraine. That's what the Democrats are going all out for. They are still not saying we need to do some soul searching and see what we can do for black Americans, for freedmen. They're still not doing it even now. I heard that they're working with someone from ADOS, but I don't trust that either. I just don't. So, no, we cannot expect anything from the Democrats. The reason I ran for office is because I want to be a person who practices what he preaches. The only thing that's going to happen is if we do not like these people in government, the way we change is we replace the people in government. You were about to say something. Yeah, I was just about to say, like, that strategy doesn't make sense. So help, I guess, or um, help me explain why they will go along with this knowing that that'll never work in America. The Democrats are banking on the Republicans liking cheap labor just as much as they do. The Republicans and the Democrats both love illegal immigration because they both love cheap labor. The difference is the Republicans would never, ever, ever give illegal immigrants the right to vote. Absolutely never. The Democrats do and want to expand it. The Democrats' plan is to replace us as their most loyal constituency. They think that if they give these illegals the right to vote, the illegals will vote for them from here to eternally because of appreciation and gratitude, like our people have largely been voting for them because of the civil rights legislation of the 1960s. But even with our people, that's starting to change. The younger the generations get, the more we're shifting away from the Democrats, and we're like, hell, this civil rights legislation, this has not systemically benefited us. In some measures, we're worse off now. So we are drifting away from them. Hallelujah. Glad to see it happening. I love this damn song. Let's keep this thing moving. So they're trying to re replace their voter base with illegals. But what they're not realizing, but they probably do now, is that the illegals have anchor babies and those anchor babies have the right to vote. And then they are not voting for the Democrats. They're voting for the Republicans. But they are still going to try to stick with that strategy of, well, maybe we just do more for the illegals. Their anchor babies will still vote for us out of a sense of gratitude and loyalty. That's why. I'm a fan of what Trump is doing. Rescind birthright citizenship for illegals. That was meant for us as freedmen. It was meant to solidify our status as American citizens so that southern states would not try to say that we were not American citizens. We were, but the federal government wanted to make it clear to southern states that you are not going to touch their citizenship. That's why it was enshrined in the Constitution. Trump is wants to make it to a way of at least you do not have an American parent. You are not a citizenship. I love it. I support it. I'm glad he's sticking to his gun, saying that's the first thing he will do, be executive action. Love it. Best thing. The Democrats, I don't know what they're going to do when they see their plans not working. But if what they're doing now is any indication, they're still not going to do for us. And we should not recommend, I mean, excuse me, we should not rely on them to do it. We should rely on ourselves. The first things our people did after slavery ended was run for office. If they could do it in the 1800s in the face of extreme racism and anti-blackness, we can do it now. That's just my take on it. Sam, I appreciate that. Black Alpha, I got to ask you one more question before I drop down, bro. Go ahead, family. Hey, are you doing anything to celebrate uh, when these mass deportations jump off? Oh, yeah, man. I'm going to walk around town with a sombrero on, brother. How about yourself? Hey, I'm, I'm down here in Miami, bro. Me and some of the FBA brethren, we throwing a party. So, <laughs> so, so everybody, go ahead and get the grill fired up, the steaks, the hamburgers. We turning up. But I'm going to drop down, man. I'm going to be dancing like, family? I'm gonna be dancing like Eddie Guerrero when he won the WWE Championship for Brock Lesnar. So, you know, I'm going to be turning up, too. That's how we supposed to do it. Absolutely. Church of Black Power, it's on you. Yes, sir. I was just going to say, you know, um, I'm going to be heading down to Eagle Pass there and uh, I'm going to be watching it happen live. I want to make sure it's getting done the way it got to be done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I'm going to record it so that we can, you know, I can send it out to the family and we can go ahead and talk about it because, you know, they're already... I don't know if you guys heard, but uh, Mesco's been reporting like there was a 3,000 to 4,000 people caravan heading out this way. 
and they ended up um, turning themselves right back around because of the fact that they they found out that Trump wasn't wasn't having it. <laughs> and then they found out who his new borders are was going to be. All of a sudden, the caravan broke up. So, yeah, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead down there because I want to see them moving right back across that border the way they forced themselves across the border talking about uh, they have the right to be here. I just wanted to say that a little bit. Let's go ahead, EJ. And I'm glad he said something about that, too. You even have Latinos out here talking about they deserve reparations and that the United States of America is not a real, is not um, the U.S., it's Mexico. Y'all been got that situated a long time ago. Y'all don't own this um, territory anymore. Hell, y'all don't even own Mexico. The cartels down there running, y'all. You know, you got folks down there dressing up like SWAT team officers, um, out warming and out um, militarizing the police, so... If you're going to be a tough person, you need to be in your homeland helping your people. You could be out here doing stuff for your people, just like Foundation of Black Americans were doing doing slavery. We was out here fighting with our fists, using tools that we were using in the slave fields, talking about you deserve reparations. I mean, if you go to your country, you can probably get something. And this just goes to show you that people that come from these foreign backgrounds, not not all of them, but a certain amount of them from the tether community, from the, for, from the tether community, they put themselves in positions that they're not even qualified for. They don't say anything about the trials and tribulations that's going on in their homelands, but they be up in these countries and be up in these states like New York City talking about they running something. So this just goes to show you that people like that don't have no um, smoke for the people in their homeland that causing chaos and confusion, but they want to come to America and just take and just lollygag and take all our resources. You know, that's about to stop. And I'll be glad when it does, man. So that's all I got to say. Family, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. As well as you, my brother Church. Everybody got to remember, the Democrats had their agenda. When they came out and they started speaking about immigration, they would always talk around the impacts that it has on foundational black America. And there's been sociology after sociology report that shows that it harms us. Donald Trump comes out and says that illegal immigrants take black jobs. And what ended up happening? The Democrats got mad at him for saying it. Did y'all see any Latinos get mad at that? The Latinos was like, you're right. They take Latino jobs too. You're the right, Latinos understood that. Yeah, they was cool. They was like, yo, I'm with them. So we got to remember the only people that was cool with these people taking our jobs were the Democrats and then the blackface Democrats. Now things have changed a bit. Donald Trump is not even in office yet. And he already has a plan and an agenda to end mass immigration. And this is why they're scared. They're jumping over the border. This man ain't even president yet. He's already got his borders are. He's got a secretary of state, defense, everybody. And these folks are running scared left and right. If you look at these tethers right now, they nervous. They nervous. I don't care where you're from if you know what time it is. And I'm going to say something. I want to ask you this question, Marcel, because me and you've been talking about this for a long, long time. How do you feel? And I think I already know the answer. But since we smoking on that goddamn Democratic Shield pack tonight, family, light them up. How do you feel about the military being used against the cartels? Because remember, Donald Trump said we declare war on the cartels. Translation, we declare war on illegal immigrants. The cartel is just a proxy word for illegals. So anytime he says the cartels, he's talking about everybody who's here illegally. And if that is his premises translation towards Julio, hey, then you can go ahead and get to translating because I don't give a damn. I'm popping popcorn watching the whole show. How do you feel, Marcel, about the military and how do you feel about what we're about to see in terms of closing the border and how it's about to be hard out here for a tether? If you're there, my brother. I think we need to see if they're hiring. <laughs> I'm going to say it right there. I you ain't lying, Marcel. For a lot of us because so Joe Crow Biden and Kamala Harris they hired more IRS agents to terrorize us. The Pentagon has failed a seventh audit, like nine to fifteen trillion dollars they cannot account for. And they hired more IRS agents to go after us, to go after cash app donations and tips and things like that. Trump and them are coming in wanting to hire more ICE agents. You know, I've been wanting to transition out of teaching, and this might be my calling. So I think this is a good job opportunity. And that's the way we need to look at it, y'all. A good job opportunity to serve our country. 
Can I say this real quick? Uh, y'all do know, uh, shout out to the new boarders all time. Cause, uh, what was it? Trey Della Agua was sitting there talking about, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to fight y'all. Y'all ain't going to, and Tom told him just like this, say what you want. My gang is bigger than yours. And I, I felt, I felt like that was the most gangster stuff that I hadn't heard since Trump left the office to be one honey with you, because that's the same, that's the type of border czar we needed. That's the type of border czar Kamala was supposed to be. But of course she would never have been that because she's a part of the democratic party. Just so I'll land there. I mean, I don't think she can even get one person across the border with the smell of those collard greens when they're not cooked the um, proper way. They just cause side effects that are really damaging to, you know, the people out here. <laughs> hey, I'm in full support. I'm going to go ahead and let the world know. I support Tom Homan in his uh, quest to start running all of these illegals out of America. You know what I'm saying? If Tom Homan needs any help, you go ahead and you can contact the Black Alpha Network. I will get the squid on and we will go on down to you to pay for the gas money and we will help build that goddamn wall. Go ahead, EJ. They apparently think that they're running something in the United States of America, but apparently they ain't running nothing but flip-flops under their feet when it comes to them taking care of their business in their homeland. But this just goes to show you not only that these racist legal aliens that's coming from Mexico, Central America, we got to watch out for these, you know, black immigrants too, because they'll be the ones that'll try to be your friend and they'll just turn on you for a butter biscuit and some loose change just to get on the bus to run away from their problems. And this just goes to show you that, you know, all skin folk ain't kin folk. And when you see um, examples on this app constantly going on day by day, it just goes to show you that we got to keep our head on the swivel and just stick around people that want to, you know, cope with us. Because a lot of these people, they talk a lot of crap on this app, but, you know, they ain't going to the grape in a fruit fight. Because we clearly see in these um, videos that's going around the world that these other people, from other demographics coming into your homeland and talking about they running a state like New York City where black Americans out um count them and we always been on point. We always been on point at a certain degree just to put in, you know, enough work on y'all. But y'all can um look what I'm um talking about in the jumbo truck. And New York City is eleven times bigger than Jamaica. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, brother. I can't wait. Uh, that goes to show you they crashing out right now because either they got to go home or their family can't come here. All of the chips are on our side, family. They are upset. They terrified. They scared. They don't know what's going on next. Right. Well, we got them. See, they thought they was going to disrespect foundational black Americans and they was always going to have Kamala Harris, Joe Biden and the Democrats to lean on. OK, but once we got their masses out the way, then what the hell are they going to do? They ain't got nothing else, nothing to say. Marcel, you there right now, brother? Oh, man. Brother, who, who's this? Al Gore Rhythm guy talking reckless in the uh, chat. Come on up, Al Gore Rhythm. Come on up. I mean, we're not responding to your little uh, please look at me tweets. Come up in the Jumbotron. I'm not going to say this is a safe space, but we do not do echo chambers here. So if you have something you want to say, grab the mic. Think what you want to think about that lady that came up here woke AF. But at least she came up. So be a man or be a woman and come up here. I don't even see anything from him in the thread. So maybe I'm maybe I'm just tuning you out that effectively. Come up here and grab a mic and say what you need to say. And let's have that back and forth. If you're not going to do that, you might as well stop with your little please look at me tweets. Is he saying something in the thread, Alpha? Yeah, I seen him saying, I don't know who's in the thread, but I seen it on my timeline. He was he was trying to shame you. He was like, Marcel called on people to be um, deported. Yeah, yeah, I told him Greg Dixon. Like, my name's no damn secret. I don't know why people like to say my first name is Greg. That's all. That's been all over my website. Matter of fact, when people call me Marcel Dixon, I will say to them, my name is Greg Marcel Dixon. So I don't know why people think that's some sort of flex. Yeah, Greg Marcel goddamn Dixon. My full name's Mel there. My face is out there. Okay? A lot of things about me is out there. That's no, that's not no intimidation tactic with me. Probably some damn tether who's afraid he's about to get that knock on the door of a Tom Holman. I don't know, man. That last lady that came up here, he probably on um, spreading. He probably getting some of that mayonnaise, so he had to come up here and you know defend his you know side chicks. So, you know, 
I see his uh he got about 30 different flags in here. This shit look like the United Nations. Al Gore with him. I'm just letting you know you don't want that Marcel smoke. She didn't want that smoke. Nope. Uh the other guy, fanatic, or whatever the hell. I'm just telling y'all now, y'all don't want that South Carolina smoke. I'm telling you. And we rolling up them packs tonight. This is the wrong place and wrong time. Everybody listening right now, the Democrats. The Democratic Shields, the Democratic operatives, or whatever you want to attach to them, y'all lost. Go home. What my man Cameron say? You mad, okay? You mad, you mad, you upset, you hurting, you nervous, you wobbling, you shook, and you ain't got nothing to say. You're not going to disrespect foundational black Americans because I looked at the election, looked like the whole country disrespected y'all. So pack your bags, go home, sit down, be quiet, and when you get on your knees and pray tonight, you just pray. For the very fact that maybe you can get a butter biscuit tomorrow and then you thank God that you live in a country that foundational black Americans created. That part, that part, that part. This is a different time, y'all, where they don't get to go back and forth with foundational black Americans. They don't have the privilege of being able to go back and forth with us. All they can do is just take this L, be embarrassed, and then disappear. Disappear like Kamala on that damn flight, all right? Disappear like these tethers when Tom Holman show up. You don't have the right or the privilege to talk to foundational black Americans. You don't have the right or the privilege to speak to us or exist in our presence. We told everybody Kamala was gonna lose, she lost. We told everybody it was gonna be a landslide, it was. We told everybody that the Democratic plantation got burnt the hell down and it got burnt down. You can't go back to the Democratic plantation because it doesn't even exist anymore. All right, so when all they see is a bunch of ashes, that's all that's left. And we called it. We called our shot, family. Nothing but net. So I want everybody to have that type of brashness and boldness. When you win, you win. And when you the victor, you the victor. And they the losers. So we're going to be like the victorious ones, and they're going to be like the losers. And they're going to be quiet. They're going to realize that they've been embarrassed to the world. They've been regulated to the world. They can't go nowhere. They're not accepted anywhere. They can't even be the man's property no more because that white man ain't got a job no goddamn more. So they out here tap dancing for free and still ain't getting nothing. Plaz probably still getting thrown off stage. This is what it is. They came in the game as losers. They're going to leave as losers. And foundational black Americans started off as winners. And that's the way it's always going to be. Church of Black Power. And hey, before he go, I'm glad yes, you sir. said something uh, about Plies because we know he getting uh, suplex like uh, Shane McMahon was off King of the Ring <laughs> in 2001. So, you know, he's having dreams and nightmares. But my bad. <laughs> yeah, I Good wonder stuff. which one hurt more. Him getting uh, body slammed off that stage or Kamala's laws. Which one y'all think has caused Plies more pain? After all that shucking and jiving and tap dancing, he was doing almost a damn minstrel show for this woman. I wonder which one has cost him more pain. I think it's going to be the Kamala situation because, you know, it cost him money. He was just, you know, he was on an interview. He wasn't getting the money like Roland Martin. He wasn't getting the money like Oprah. This was just an interview for him. So I think it hurt him a lot more than getting slammed off the stage because you know he might have he might have gotten that 350 that rolling got you know what i'm saying that's just my opinion on that anybody think otherwise i wouldn't even give him two dollars to buy me chicken from mcdonald's so 350,000 is the most he probably ever made in his rap career so i wouldn't even give him that and you, you know plies about four foot two so he had to get a happy meal he had to get the kids meal and that, that ended up happening to him <laughs> We in a recession, man. Inflation done went up. I don't even think he can get a kid's meal for that price. This, them, them like the 1990 prices right there, brother. And he had to get a kid's cuisine. He had to go get the one you put in the damn oven. <laughs> yep. He get his food from Timu.com. He got to get it shipped. <laughs> oh, damn.